Hi, I'm Madison and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a 24 hour Valentine's Day smart reading vlog for you. I'm really excited. I kind of feel like this is becoming a bit of a theme for me every single time there's like a different holiday, like vacation -y kind of thing that's going on. I'm just like, you know what? What is what? What is some themed smut I can find around this? I've done Halloween twice now. I recently just did Christmas, which was very interesting. And now I'm like, you know what? Valentine's Day. There has to be Valentine's Day smut that's out there. Like, why wouldn't there be? It's the day of like romance and bow chicka wow wow banging. So, I did a little bit of research. Um, surprisingly enough, it's it's not as Hey, okay, look, there are a lot that are out there, but there are a lot out there that look really bad. So I tried to find ones that were like recent and looked like they'd be really fun and good. And there are a lot out there that look like they're like wholesome ones too. And I'm like, no, I want, I want smut. I want like Zelda. Oi, do not eat my shoes. Hang on. Cats, man. I don't know what it is about my cat. She loves like things that are like this. I cannot. Like I was saying, there's, you know, I want ones that are like seriously smutty that, you know, are just full on banging the whole time. So I actually do have a couple that I did find. Um, none that are like weird. Well, okay, as of now, they're not weird. I have to read them to see if they are weird. But basically, I'm gonna be reading a bunch of smutty novellas. The very first I'm gonna be reading is obviously Cupid's Peak by Leisure Cot, because Leisure Cot is one of my favorite like smutty romance authors to date. She does a bunch, every single time there's a holiday, she does a new like smutty novella. And this is her first one for Valentine's Day and it's actually coming out this year. I don't know when, the date is very soon cause I just got the arc of it. But I'm gonna read that. It is, I think it's a brother's best friend trope. I don't know too much about it. I'm gonna read it, let you guys know and we'll see how it's gonna go. I am so obsessed with this. It's literally not even funny. I've got 30 minutes left to read. I've devoured it. I've literally, I had to actively make the decision to put the cat, like, put it down and get Pete the camera up to talk to you guys because I was, I was gonna blast right through it. I was just gonna go full speed because it is so, oh my God. I haven't read a book. Like it's been like a hot second. Like, I've been reading some pretty mediocre books lately. This, not mediocre. A plus, oh my God, it is so hot. It is so hot, the sexual tension. <gasps> Oh my God, and it builds up to a public play scene where he under the table with her and his hands and her hoo hoo mm, It was so good, it was so good. Oh my God, exhibitionism, A plus. <laughs> so, what is this about, you might ask? Well, you've got Eli and you've got Mia. Um, in high school, uh, she tutored him, he was a popular guy. She has a twin sister who was really popular, but she was like more like reclusive. Um, never confessed her feelings to him. Now it's 10 years later and her twin sister is setting up on a blind date tonight, which is Valentine's Day at Cupid's Peak, which is this amazing ski resort in Colorado. Um, she gets to the ski resort. There's a storm coming. She's on the gondola. She's like, oh my God, this is awful. Why'd I do this? Gets to the restaurant. Who was there? Eli. Eli is also now a famous hockey player for the NHL as well, which is just chef's kiss we stand that we love that i love i'm gonna get a little bit of hockey in something because hockey is a plus anyway they're there they're flirting a little bit um they decide to play truth or dare at the table and it all comes out as to how he's had a crush on her for the last 10 years and hasn't really stopped pining for her and she <laughs> it, is so good. it is so good it is so good it is amazing and oh my god i'm so here for it it is so good you like I cannot even with how much I'm loving this. It is so good. And he's starting to do like his little bit of dirty talk right now. <gasps> and I know, I know from what Lee was like putting out beforehand that um, they're about to go back up to their hotel room now. And I know that there's a jacuzzi scene and I'm so excited for the jacuzzi scene. I don't know what the jacuzzi scene's gonna be, but you tell me there is a sexy jacuzzi. T I'm done. I'm so here for it. It was so good. It was so hot. <gasps> I'm not going to give anything else away because it's a really short book, but I will let you guys know how the jacuzzi scene goes. But basically, yes. I just wanted to <laughs> come on because he goes to go take off her bra and then he goes to go fling it. But then the wind catches it and it goes right over the railing. <laughs> just <come on. laughs> it's so good. This is the jacuzzi scene, the jacuzzi scene. I'm not telling you more about it apart from the fact that the jacuzzi scene is very, 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 very good. Very good. Oh my god, I can't, I'm... I know I said, okay, first off, I know that I was wearing this outfit at the beginning of the video, and then I changed outfits, and then I'm back in this outfit. I'm fully aware of that, okay? I'm now inside. But 
I know I said before, I was like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if I read one that had like Cupid as the main character? None of the ones I'm looking at have that. Um, liar. <laughs> I'm literally 4% into Sweet Girl by Jack Whitney, which I'm very excited about. It's my second Jack Whitney book. And two pages in, the guy's like, it's so funny that they call me Cupid when I actually am the god himself. I'm like, oh, shit. He actually, damn, I accidentally picked a book that actually has Cupid, the god, Eros, as the main character. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Anyway, that that was, that's literally the entire update. I just wanted to be like, I'm about to see Cupid bang. So, you know, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> okay, I still don't know what this book is about, but it's written in third person and it's really fucking with me, to be quite honest. I haven't read a book in third person like a romance book like in a while. I don't mind third person like when I'm reading fantasies and things, but it's weirding me out. It's like one hour until Chloe could go home. It was the amount of time Chloe had told her friend. Like, I'm like, it's so, it's weirding me out. I don't know why. I didn't think this was a thing. I, I've gotten so used to first person. This is nuts. Okay, this is very, very fun. Um, 15% in, you've got Chloe and Gavin. Gavin, you know, is Cupid, legit. But also he um, has like a dating app that he ran. And tonight is like a night that's like a mix up for a bunch of people part of the dating app. And it's like a really fun Valentine's Day thing. Chloe goes to the event with her best friend, Lana, um, enters into there instantly. Um, you know, Gavin sees her and is like, damn, she's hot. And like, is like mystified by her and is like, I want to be with her. Chloe, however, is a boss ass bitch and is there just having fun. Doesn't actually want to be there in the first place, but she's like, I'll play along, why not? Then this douche nozzle comes up and tries to hit on her and she's like not having any of it. Gavin comes in to try and like, you know, be a nutting chunning armor. Doesn't even need to be the case because the guy tries to then punch Gavin and she's like, oh, this is not happening. And she throws her drink in the douche nozzle's face and it is quality content right there. He also pretends that he knows her and he's like, um, hey, I've been looking everywhere for you. And she's like, I told you what I was wearing. And he goes, you told me what we were wearing underneath. <laughs> this is going to be very fun. Like I said, weird about it being in third person, but I'm actually like, I've gotten over that. Took a little while, took 15%, but I'm over the third person now. Coming on quick, I know the lighting is shit because the sun is currently setting, which is quite beautiful to look at, but quite shit to film in. But I wanted to come on because I am halfway through the book. It is so hot. Jack Whitney, like, works fucking masterpieces. Like, oh my god, I'm two for two at this point. Like, this is going so well, but I want to quickly say she just gave him Roadhead and it was A plus content right there. Okay. So, when I read Sweet Girl, um, she mentioned this thing called snow cream, where basically, like, you go outside, you get, like, fresh snow, and then you add, like, sugar and condensed milk to it, and it's, like, a dish you can then eat but made from snow. And I sat there and I was like, oh, that sounds weird. I've never heard of that in my entire life. I'm not surprised. I'm Australian. Um, didn't think much of it. I, I forgot about it. I was just on Facebook on like Facebook videos, like the reels, but like Facebook version. And a video came off of a lady making snow cream. <laughs> Like, how did that manifestation? That is so weird. That is so weird. I can't even. Oh my god. So, uh, this is the next book that I'm reading. I'm not going to say the title because I am not saying this word on the internet, but you can guess what it is. Um, <laughs> I just started it and it's already pretty funny. I finished the book, which I will not name because I'm not doing that on the internet. Um, and it was fine. I really did not care for it. I didn't update you guys because I was like, it is what it is. The basically, um, it's a reverse harem. It's this girl who works in an architecture. Why the fuck am I so itchy? Um, who works in an architecture firm who ends up going on this, like signing up for a dating app, of course, where you get matched to people. So she goes to the event that night to be matched up and who, lo and behold, who is she matched up with? That's correct. Her three bosses. Or were you surprised? No, they then decide to take her home for the weekend so she can decide which one of them she would like to be with. And at the end of it, they're like, you know what? We've never shared a woman before, but we would like to share you. And that is what the entire 90 pages is about. Um, I think I've become a mild snob recently when it comes to reverse harems. They are my favorite, they're my bread and butter. They give me reverse harem, I'm a happy camper. That does mean that when I read a 90 page one, 
there's no chemistry because there's 90 pages and you've got four people romantically involved, that is not enough time to spend with that many people to establish any sort of a connection. So therefore, I didn't care for it. There was always going to be a dud in these. So anyway, uh, so far we've got five stars for Cupid Peak, five stars for Sweet Girl, two stars for Cupid is a see you next Tuesday. Um, and now I'm going to be reading, what is it called? Oh yeah. <laughs> a very mountain man Valentine's Day. <laughs> I thought this one would be really funny to read. So why not? This is 90 pages. Again, no clue what this one's about, but it looks like it's going to be very fun. Oh, okay. So this one is about Rory and Rhodes and they've been emailing with each other for the last six months. And then this takes place when she shows up on his doorstep, I'm guessing, on Valentine's Day. Ooh, I'm excited. Okay, I'll let you know how this goes. Okay, look, look, there aren't many words in the English language that I hate. You know, like there, there are a lot of words out there that I can read that I'm like, maybe not, they're not great words, but they're fine. I'm, I can live with them, you know. I can read about his rod and his seed and her juices. That's fine. It doesn't bother me. But you know what? There is one word that does bother me and I don't come across it often. I don't come across it often. But there's a word that I do come across and I'm like, that is just so unsexy. It is so unsexy. And it's the word cream. I can't, I can't. Like if they say it, it comes up and I'm just like, I'm like, no, it's like an instant ick. I cannot do it. It just doesn't work for me. I don't know if anyone else was the same. Cause like, it's not, it's not like common. Oh, it, I feel like it comes up in a lot of like breeding kink books or like wants to smut I see cream, but like, I don't read like a bunch of those outside of those contexts. So like, it's not something I come across often. So like, oh, no, it's not it. It's really not it, you know? Okay, this one, it's super cute. It's, it's a little weird, but it's super cute. Okay, so first off, yeah, she does rock up to his place and like the second she gets there, she just, lays one right on him and I'm like girl you have spoken to this man for the last six months and that this is the first time you were seeing him in your entire life and you just kiss him like okay you do you like you know balls to you babe balls to you babe but it's super adorable I'm now 50% in I've got like 20 minutes left to read it this one was like also like 90 pages long and he has scars he's a scarred hero he got scarred from being in the in war uh, <laughs> in the army <laughs> why why couldn't i think with the wet army and he's super self-conscious about it he's like why would she ever love me when i'm like scarred like this and she goes she goes i love you like no matter what you look like and he goes do you mean that that you love me scars and all <laughs> She's like, yes. <laughs> oh how adorable all right so i finished it and they got married <laughs> i will never understand with novellas when people get married I, I i get it but i also don't get it because they've been talking for six months she comes down to spend three-day weekend with him at the end of three-day weekends he proposes and she says yes i mean look i guess technically if you're thinking about it they did know each other for six months and like that's ample mad time to like propose but like they hadn't met it's fine it's fine anyway i'm about to make an awful decision for myself and it's okay we're gonna all try and sit here together now will i actually be able to read this book probably not it's called step in valentine now it's a step sibling romance and we all know that i have never had great luck when it comes to step siblings you know foster siblings any sort of relations i'm gonna try this but i might dnf it as a preface so we're gonna give it a shot i'm regretting it already but it's not a fun smutty video unless i do something that i regret there's a kink warning page and it's already a very bad sign oh no okay so <sighs> Let me read these out to you. We've got 
the kinks, uh, step-sibling, bondage, butt play, use of sex toys, blowjobs, swallowing, crying. Why is crying a kink? Okay. Um, gagging, public play. Oh, I like public play. Edging, daddy kink. Dirty talk and spanking. Why? Why is it that every single time there is a step-sibling romance or a foster sibling romance, the daddy king becomes involved. This is the third time I've come across one that is like this. Look, cause it's apparently, it's not enough. It's not enough to be like, let's, let's have the taboo of them being like somewhat related. No, we need to throw in the daddy king as well. You guys know I hate the daddy king. So I'm like, whatever. No, no. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna count it as a loss. I really like, I don't even wanna bother. I'm 30% in, it's past midnight, and I just don't, don't wanna do it, honestly. But here's the thing, it is well written. It is well written, I will give it that much. Okay, I read 30% of it and I was like, this is good writing. So if you were into step-sibling romances, <sighs> taboo romances of that nature, do check it out and read it because it is well written. This is just not for me. I will keep trying. No. No. I mean, I say I, I won't read any more of these and then something will come up later down the line where I'm like, oh, let's do it again for fun. But um, as of right now, the answer is a strict no, I'm not. I'm not doing that at all. It's not. It's not happening. I'm done. It's fine. I saw it of fun. I'm really glad I read Sweet Girl by Jack Whitney and Cuba's Peak by Alicia Cott. This just goes, oh, oh, when I finished Sweet Girl, it even said that there's going to be a full length novel following them as well in the future, which I'm really excited about. I love Jack Whitney. I really, really need to read more from their books because I have adored the shit out of them so far. So, you know, overall, a pretty good vlog, you know, two A plus books that everyone should be reading. Three books that, you know, if they seem like a cup of tea, go for it. Otherwise, not going to write home about them. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please leave it down below. If you want to see more of me, please go to my channel. And don't forget to check me out over on Instagram and on TikTok. And until next time, thanks so much, everyone. Bye-bye.